Perhaps her name doesn't ring a bell, but you've probably heard Desiree's most popular song. The English entertainer experienced international success with her anthem of affirmations entitled You Gotta Be. Her music has been described as bland and monotonous, but her diehard fans say otherwise. She was portrayed as not being black enough for American urban radio, all while multiple black American artists attempted to profit from her hard work. Unfortunately, a series of personal issues caused her to pull back from the industry, and she disappeared from the limelight for several years. She's very private about her personal life, but we were able to gather some information about what happened to her career. So grab some popcorn, sit back, relax, and let's get into today's video. Desiree was born in London on November 30th, 1968. She was raised by her Guyanese mother and her Bayesian father. At the age of 10, she and her family moved to Barbados. Three years later, her parents got divorced, so Desiree, her mom, and her sister moved back to London. She grew up admiring singers like Billie Holiday, Stevie Wonder, and Bob Marley. And since her dad was a musician, she learned to love all types of music. Even though she didn't have any experience as a musician, she had visions of being a performer and started working on her songwriting and singing skills at an early age. Her parents wanted her to become a lawyer, and her mom gave her a stern warning. Don't get into the music business. You'll be exploited and manipulated. But nothing could change Desiree's mind. With encouragement from her boyfriend, she sent her demo tape to CBS Music on a Friday. She told the Washington Post she received a response from them the following Monday. They invited her to their office and told her they loved her voice. They also thought it was great that she didn't have any musical experience. They told her, You're raw and you're fresh. Before she knew it, 23-year-old Desiree was signed to Sony Soho Square record label. She was immediately flown to Australia, Japan, and Europe to record music. She completed her first album, Mind Adventures, which was released in February 1992. She said the music was a reflection of her life, and she pulled inspiration from her own interpretation of love, complicated relationships, her parents' divorce, and her time spent in the West Indies. After listening to the finished project, her record label was stumped. They couldn't figure out how to market her music. They told her, well, you're not black enough for black radio, and you're not really contemporary pop. Maybe we'll approach you through the adult contemporary route. Desiree fought back. In an interview with the Washington Post, she stated she told her label, I ain't moving from my face, from my race, from my history. The album was a hit in Europe, but it received little to no recognition in the U.S., Desiree said American Urban Radio also didn't think she was black enough to be played alongside artists like Mary J. Blige and Erica Badu. But Desiree kept her eyes on the prize. She went on tour, collaborated with other musicians, fell deeply in love with her boyfriend, and ultimately got her heart broken. She told Entertainment Weekly that the painful demise of her relationship prompted her to read a book by author Shakti Gawain entitled Creative Visualization. Desiree said the book inspired her to write a song called You Gotta Be, which was full of positive and self-love affirmations. Intertwining Caribbean and R&B sounds, Desiree's smooth and jazz-inspired vocals made the track a radio-friendly hit. The song was included in her 1994 sophomore album called I Ain't Movin', which was released on Epic Records. The album sold more than one million copies in the U.S. alone. Desiree went from being relatively unknown to being compared to Anita Baker, Vanessa Williams, and the late Sarah Vaughan. While there were millions of people who were attracted to Desiree's music, there were others who were confused by her style. Unable to pigeonhole her as an R&B artist, Desiree was in a lane of her own and simply described her music as acoustic soul. She added, it's deep. It comes from within. She became a hot commodity in the industry. Director and producer Spike Lee reached out and asked her to write a song for the film Clockers. 
Stevie Wonder and Prince also reached out and asked to work with her, and she also toured the U.S. with the singer Seal. In 1996, she contributed the song I'm Kissing You to the Romeo and Juliet soundtrack. She was also invited to sing the romantic song during a portion of the film. I'm Kissing You stayed on the Billboard charts for 44 weeks. Even though it wasn't a huge hit, it caught someone's attention. And that someone just so happened to be a young Beyonce Knowles. But we'll get into that in a bit, because first, we have to talk about this messy situation between Desiree and Janet Jackson. In 1997, Janet released the song Got Till It's Gone, featuring Q-Tip, which was included on her multi-million selling album Velvet Rope. The writing credits of the song included Janet, her then-husband Renee Elizondo Jr., Joni Mitchell, and Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis, to name a few. The song sounded so much like Desiree's song Feel So High of her debut album that she decided to take the matter to court. Desiree was sending a clear message to other musicians. Do not use her work without permission. The issue was settled out of court, with Desiree being awarded 25% of Janet's song's publishing, which was calculated at close to $3 million. Desiree told the Irish Times, My aim wasn't to get money out of her. It was purely for justice to be done and a settlement to be reached, recognizing she had borrowed from my work and not given me credit. In 1999, she was recognized at the World Music Awards as the top-selling British artist. We didn't see her again until 2003. She re-emerged with much shorter hair and a new album entitled Dream Soldier. Although the album barely cracked the top 200 in the UK and didn't make it on the US charts at all, Desiree appeared to be happy and content. She told Chronicle Live she had found love and was in a four-year relationship with a musician. For the next two years, she stayed away from the spotlight up until she was pulled into another messy situation. Remember when we mentioned Desiree wrote the song I'm Kissing You for the 1996 film Romeo and Juliet? Well, Beyonce loved the song so much, she called it one of her all-time favorites. She decided to record a remake of the song for the 2007 re-release of her album B-Day. Unlike Janet, Beyonce's team went through the proper process of getting approval from Desiree beforehand. According to MTV.com, Beyonce received a confirmation letter and license request from Desiree's publisher. But two days after the confirmation was received, Desiree's publisher submitted a counterproposal with some strict limitations on how Beyonce could use the song. To start, Beyonce was told she could not use the song in video format. In addition, she was only allowed to use the song if she changed the title. Desiree's publisher followed up with Beyonce's team numerous times, but they never heard back. Beyonce's deluxe album was released and included the unauthorized remake of Desiree's song. A companion DVD to the album included a music video for the song, even though Desiree's team explicitly asked her not to use the song in video format. Desiree and her publisher had no choice but to file a case and asked for $150,000 in damages. Beyonce's album was pulled from stores three weeks after it was released. Beyonce's team removed the song and re-released the deluxe album without it. The settlement between the two sides was kept private. The years passed with Desiree missing in action. She was going through personal issues at that time, which her fans didn't realize. She told Melon Magazine she experienced chronic stage fright, a fear of flying, and she was tired of suffering in silence and finally received treatment. Around the same time, she was also diagnosed with an underactive thyroid, which kept her energy levels low. To top it off, her record label decided they weren't interested in her music anymore, and she was released from her contract. She walked away from the industry, spent time with friends, took a photography course, focused on her artwork, learned how to make jewelry, and earned certification as a nutritionist and naturopath. At that time, the likelihood of returning to music was slim. Not only was she having trouble getting inspired, 
but the music industry was changing so rapidly and she didn't know if or how she would fit in. It wasn't until 2014 that she returned to the studio. She said all the stress and pressure of the industry were gone, but her momentum came to a stop when her mom became ill. Desiree continued writing songs in between being her mom's caregiver. She would play her new songs, and her mom would sit quietly and smile to give her approval. Sixteen years after Dream Soldier, Desiree's long-awaited fifth studio album called A Love Story was released on Stargazer Records. Desiree's career has been an emotional ride. Making music is her passion, and we are all so grateful to be able to witness her immense talent. Let us know your thoughts on what happened to Desiree, and thanks for watching Real Reality Gossip.